Today we're going to have a look at a Kenwood TR751A. These are a uh, monoband 2 meter uh, radio dating from uh, around the 1980s and they're notable for, uh, for a couple of things. Uh, one is the fact that they had probably the hottest receiver of any 2 meter rig that's, uh, that's ever been made. And the other, unfortunately, is a, uh, a common problem with the, uh, the pots, the uh, volume and squelch, uh, RIT and RF gain pots. Um, the fact uh, that they are the hottest receiver you can probably find makes uh, fixing the pots uh, worthwhile. Unfortunately, it's not simply a matter of replacing the pots. Uh, they're basically unobtainium. You, you can't get them. Um, the only answer these days uh, really is to actually fix the pots themselves. Uh, it's an incredibly fiddly, uh, very delicate job, um, but worth doing if you've got one of these and, uh, and you value uh, a, a really good sensitive 2 meter receiver. The TR751 is a great all mode radio, but it did suffer from this major problem with the pots. As you can see, with this particular radio, just touching the volume pot is enough to drive it nuts. What we're going to do is we'll start pulling the, uh, the radio down so that we can uh, remove the pots and uh, have a go at repairing them. It's a fairly fiddly job. Um, taking the covers off, uh, we need to take the front panel off, hinge the front panel forwards. And the pots are uh, mounted on uh, two little boards just behind the front panel. You, uh, you can see them there, uh, pulled away from the front panel. Uh, they unplug, we can uh, unplug the, uh, uh, the little boards. And then we need to unsolder the pots from those boards. We then need to file the ends of the rivets so we can take the back plate off and remove the wiper where the metal wiper has actually detached from the plastic mounting. And there's the actual repair with the metal wiper re-glued onto the mount. With the radio reassembled, we now have a working volume, working squelch, working RIT and a working RF gain control. To give you some idea of why it's really worthwhile having a go at fixing these radios, here's a, uh, a receiver test of the, uh, of the little Kenwood. Uh, we're just going to uh, run the Kenwood in CW mode and we're just going to send it a carrier. Uh, now, that is 0 0.05 microvolts. And that's running through a, a, a probably a slightly lossy couple of connectors and a bit of uh, RG58. That's a, 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 a clearly discernible signal. And uh, there you can see 0.05 microvolts from the IFR. We'll turn it off. Turn it back on again. These things really are an absolutely red hot receiver. Right, this there's um, 0.05 microvolts, and uh, it's just signal to noise, and we'll turn it on. So you can see there, there's the signal to noise with 0.05 microvolts going into it. Here it is again, using some different software. Once again, we're uh, we're sitting on 0.05 microvolts and you can see the uh, the cyanide down there so about five point uh, about five and a half or thereabouts but, uh, this is just using some uh, some different software so uh, yeah not bad for uh, 0.05 microvolts there you go so there we are another uh, successful resurrection of a 30-year-old radio 
uh, which despite being 30 years old, probably runs rings around uh, a lot of modern rigs. A worthwhile repair. Thanks. Mm -hmm.